About 20 years ago, a group of researchers did a study at a wine store. They wanted to find out if source background music could influence shoppers' wine selections. Here's what they found. On the days when they played German music, German wines, also French ones, by three to one. Then on the days when they played French music, French wines, also German ones, by three to one. But here's a kicker. They asked shoppers if the background music influenced their wine selections. You probably could guess. Over 90% of shoppers say no. This study shows that our buying decisions can be influenced by something so subtle that we don't even notice. The study also raises some important questions. How do we make, make buying decisions? Do we make decisions consciously based on facts, reason, and logic? Or do we make decisions unconsciously based on emotions, feelings, and intuition? Next, I'd like to share with you how our unconscious emotions influence our decisions. You remember New Coke? Here's the story behind New Coke. In 1985, Coca-Cola was losing market share to Pepsi. Pepsi had been taunting Coca-Cola by claiming that in blind taste testing, more people preferred Pepsi over Coke. Coca-Cola decided to improve the taste by changing its formula. It came up with New Coke. Over 200,000 people taste test New Coke. Overwhelmingly, people preferred New Coke over the original Coke. But more importantly, people preferred New Coke over Pepsi. With a lot of confidence, Coca-Cola rolled out New Coke. But very quickly, this sweet drink turned into a bitter pill that cost Coca-Cola tens of millions of dollars. Angry customers started protesting around the country, demanding the original Coke back. Anxious customers start hoarding Coke products left on store shelves. Coca-Cola headquarters received about 8,000 angry phone calls a day. You can't help asking, how could 200,000 people get it wrong? What did Coca-Cola miss? What Coca-Cola missed was a strong emotional connection that people had. For nearly 100 years, Coke had been marketed as a feel-good product. Their marketing slogans included, have a Coke and a smile. I'd like to buy the world a Coke. Celebrities like Elvis, Marilyn Monroe, and the Beatles were the face of Coca-Cola. If you don't feel well, have a Coke. Coke was more than a sweet beverage. Drinking Coke had become a feel-good experience. That feel-good experience involves thoughts, feelings, and memories. Well, drinking Coke seems a bit complicated, doesn't it? A study published in 2004 shows how Coca-Cola's marketing has imprinted our brains with good thoughts, feelings, and memories. In this study, volunteers were asked to drink either Coke or Pepsi while their brains were scanned to find out which part of the brain became active. The researchers started out with blind taste testing like the Pepsi challenge. They were able to replicate the result of the Pepsi challenge. That is, slightly over 50% of volunteers preferred Pepsi over Coke. No surprise there. Then the researchers made a slight change to the Pepsi challenge. The volunteers were told exactly what they're going to drink before taking a sip. It's no longer blind taste test anymore. Suddenly, 75% of volunteers preferred Coke over Pepsi. More surprisingly, while they're drinking Coke, the emotional part of the brain, the memory part of the brain, and the thinking part of the brain became very active. In sharp contrast, this elevated brain activity pattern was not observed while they're drinking Pepsi. What does the study tell us? The study demonstrates what happens in our brains unconsciously when we think of a popular brand like a Coca-Cola. The study also demonstrates that our thoughts, feelings, and memories can unconsciously change our experience with a product. This is exactly how the unconscious mind influences our choices. The thoughts, feelings, and memories evoked by the Coca-Cola brand are the strong emotional connections people have. And Coca-Cola missed those strong emotional connections when they reduced this iconic drink to just taste. This is why New Coke failed. Through this brain study, we can see how marketing influences our emotions and our decisions without our awareness. This is where neuroscience meets marketing. Welcome to neuromarketing. Neuromarketing is the new science consumer decisions. 
He studies how we make buying decisions and how our emotions and intuition shape our decisions. But why did marketers start paying attention to our emotions, intuition, and unconscious minds? Here are some of the reasons. Over the last few decades, neuroscience research has confirmed that about 95% of our decisions are made unconsciously. During the same time, medical studies have shown that without emotion, we simply cannot make decisions. Inside the human brain, there are many highly specialized areas. Each area has unique functions. Some areas are responsible for seeing, some are for hearing, some are for tasting. And this large area of the brain colored in blue is what we call the limbic system. It's our emotional brain. All our emotions depend on this part of the brain. Our love, compassion, optimism, pride, joy, happiness, as well as anger, fear, anxiety, embarrassment, guilt, and sadness are centered in this part of the brain. Neuroscientists often learn more about the brain when something goes wrong. Here we have Frank. He had a stroke. The stroke damaged a large part of his emotional brain. What's going to happen to him? What you will see is that Frank will have a very difficult time making decisions, even the simplest decisions. When he goes to a grocery store to buy breakfast cereal, he will agonize over the decision whether he should choose Wheaties, Cheerios, or Corn Flakes. Without his emotional brain being fully functional, he simply cannot make that decision. Every purchase involves decision making. Both neuroscience and marketing can help us understand how we make decisions and what influence our decisions. This marriage between neuroscience and marketing has given birth to neuromarketing. But why does neuromarketing matter? Every year, 9 out of 10 new products fail. About $100 billion spent on marketing are wasted. The main reason is that traditional marketing fails to pay attention to consumers' unconscious emotional experiences. This will happen to New Coke. If we can avoid wasting so much money on mindless marketing, both consumers and businesses win. With neuromarketing, the focus on creating better consumer experiences. And it does work. First, I'd like to share with you how Google taps its users' unconscious behavior to maximize its revenues. We all have seen Google ads before. The links in these ads are colored in blue. Every time you click on these blue links, Google makes money. Naturally, Google wants its user to click on these ads more often. We know that color can impact our emotion and our behavior. The question Google asked was whether a subtle change of color in these blue links could change its user's clicking behavior. Several years ago, Google tested close to 50 shades of blue in these links, wanting to find out if certain shades of blue could generate more clicks. One shade of blue did generate more clicks. By adopting that color, Google increases annual revenue by $200 million. This is the power of neuromarketing. If you know what clicks with the brain, you can apply that knowledge to create better customer experience. That better customer experience can translate into a stronger bottom line. This is why neuromarketing works. Next, I'd like to share with you how a slight and notable speed improvement by Amazon increased the sales by over $1.7 billion. According to Amazon, a one-tenth of a second speed improvement on Amazon's website can increase the sales by 1%. Consciously, we cannot detect one-tenth of a second difference, but unconsciously, our brains notice it. By speeding up the website ever so slightly, Amazon creates a better customer experience. That better customer experience generates more sales. This is powered in your marketing. If Google's unnotable change of a color makes a click more, or Amazon's unnotable speed improvement makes a buy more, what does that tell us about our decision making? Are we in total control of our decisions, or are they influenced by something so subtle that we don't even notice? A study published in 1975 shows how invisible social influence can shape our decisions. In this study, volunteers were asked to rate quality and price of cookies from two jars. One jar had 10 cookies. The other one had only two. Volunteers were told the cookies in the jar with only two left 
or in high demand and in short supply. Not surprisingly, those cookies were rated as higher in quality and price because it was believed that more people wanted them. What is surprising is that all the cookies used in the study were identical. We tend to believe if something is wanted by more people, it must be good and valuable. Why is this invisible social influence so persuasive? It's because decisions create uncertainty. We feel safer by following decisions made by a crowd. This is a natural bias in our brains. Amazon understands this bias very well and uses bias to persuade us to buy. Imagine you need a new coffee maker. How does Amazon help you decide? First, you're going to see a four-star rating, then over 5,000 customer reviews, then over 1,000 questions answered, then number one bestseller. All this information is based on other customers' opinions. This information comes before you see the price and the free shipping offer. Amazon persuades you by using this invisible social influence. Most people have not heard of a newer marketing yet. But if you ever bought anything at Amazon, you've been persuaded by Amazon's newer marketing techniques. Newer marketing is still in its infancy, but there's no shortage of misinformation. One big misunderstanding is that newer marketing is all about brain scans and mind reading. In 2011, the New York Times published a letter claiming that iPhone users had a romantic love for their phones. Here's the evidence cited by the author. A brain structure called insular cortex lit up during brain scans when a small number of iPhone users saw their phones. No self-respecting neuroscientist would have drawn that conclusion because the same brain structure also lights up when you see something disgusting. <laughs> One brain structure can become very active for many different emotional responses. What do you call a mind-reading brain scan? A brain scam. <laughs> Some snake oil salesmen claim that neural marketing is all about finding his brain's buy button. By pressing that buy button, you can persuade anybody, anytime, anywhere to buy anything until the cows come home. Why does this claim also sound like a scam? Because it violates the basic principle of persuasion. It seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Neural marketing is about buying decisions, but its impact has reached far beyond that, because ultimately, it's about human decisions. We're all decision makers. Throughout our lifetime, we make millions and millions of decisions. Some decisions can be very difficult, even life-changing. Over the last 10 years, I had to confront many gut-wrenching decisions. Should I leave a stable job to work on my own business? How do I care for my aging parents who are 6,000 miles away in a different country? How do I support someone who battles depression? From neural marketing, we have learned that our decisions are not completely within our control. There are many invisible influences that shape our decisions without our awareness. Being mindful of that vulnerability gives us more power, not less. Our decisions can have a lasting impact on other people's lives. From neural marketing, we have learned that something very subtle can change our behavior dramatically. What does it take to save enough energy to power all the homes in Minnesota and Iowa? It's not creating a massive government program. We're switching to LED light bulbs. We're upgrading to energy efficient appliances. It's a tiny emoticon. In a 2007 study, an energy company printed a tiny emoticon on energy bills to tell customers about their energy consumption. A happy face meant lower energy consumption than neighbors. A sad face meant higher energy consumption than neighbors. Given how powerful the invisible social influence can be, it's not surprising that our decisions, it's not surprising that our neighbors' in, the behavior can impact ours. What is surprising is that all these, these tiny emoticons reduce energy consumption by almost 3%. That's enough energy to power all the homes in Minnesota and Iowa. Who would have thought something so subtle can be so powerful? Now, this subtle cue has shown up in our lives. Here's an energy bill, energy bill I recently received. It has a happy face. 
I'd like to close my talk with one more story. This story has some bathroom humor. It's about urinal spillage. When a guy stands around a urinal, he often does his business mindlessly and aimlessly. <laughs> spillage happens, and it costs money to clean it up. In the 1990s, the Amsterdam airport came up with a brilliant solution. All they did was to etch the image black flag near the drain urinal. When guys see that black flag, they start aiming at it unconsciously. <laughs> that reduces spillage by 80%. <laughs> well, other than my poor taste of humor, what's the point? I like this story because this fly serves a good metaphor. When you search for what touches people's hearts and minds, you want to find game changers. If you understand how the brain works, if you understand how people make decisions, you can find a game changer that has a huge impact. The most fascinating thing is very often this game changer is something we don't even pay attention to. It can be something very subtle, like the background music in a wine store, a slight change of color by Google, a noticeable speed improvement by Amazon, a tiny emoticon on your energy bill, or a fly as a target. Once you find something subtle by following neuroscience, the impact will be anything but subtle. You want to make a positive impact. You want to, make, you want to help others thrive. Here's something I encourage you to try. Find your fly. And thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.